up next, uh, we have Manish, who has been directing the hackathon this year, and he's going to be uh, presenting uh, hackathon awards. Thanks, Dan. Welcome, everyone. Uh, while we've been having this amazing couple of days of talks, we've also in the background all over the world had uh, hackers uh, going at it for our track prizes uh, as established. Uh, not only we have some sponsor prizes, the challenges, as well as uh, track prizes that were decided by the committee uh, for four major areas of uh, uh, Bitcoin and Lightning, uh, infrastructure, DAP and DeFi, and uh, usability. And uh, we had two sponsors um, also that um, are going that sponsored a couple of challenges that were one, which was Skynet and Algorand. So we are going to introduce you to the winners uh, of these um, of these hacks. We had an amazing group of people that worked super hard. It was a 30 hour hackathon that started uh, Friday at 6 p.m. and finished last night at midnight. So everyone was working long hours, but the production was amazing. The projects were amazing. The people were amazing. Um, thank you everyone that took part in this and worked so hard for it. We're so excited um, to, to, uh, to honor you with the winner as the winners and all the folks that um, also participated. We were so excited to have you. Everyone was, there was just great uh, gamesmanship and uh, a great uh, environment to this first time ever uh, virtual hackathon that the MIT Bitcoin Club was so happy to sponsor. So um, getting to it, I would like to introduce please um, our first winner. Since we are the MIT Bitcoin Club and we are the MIT Bitcoin Expo, our Bitcoin and Lightning Prize winner this year is a great team named Onion78. And I'd like to um, invite them up to give us a synopsis of their project and uh, let you meet them. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I am Dan. Uh, we've got Armin up here, and we've got John. Can you guys introduce yourself? We're Onion78. Hey, guys. My name is Armin. I'm an engineer at CASA. Happy to be here. Hey guys, uh, I'm part of the Bitcoin design community. I do design and software engineering for Bitcoin payments. And we're missing uh, Ron, who also works for Casa. But what did we do? Let me share my screen and show you. So, Onion78, the, can, can you guys see my screen? Yeah. So the problem we got is that Bitcoin payments are not private by default. There's a deterministic link between the sender and the receiver. Um, and most of the time to solve that on chain, what we do is a collaborative payment called a coin join, but that requires a central coordinator and that's complicated. So instead of that, we can implement the pay to endpoint, pay to pay join standard called BIP78 to do a collaborative transaction between two peers. We did this in an existing mobile wallet called Chaincase. Um, and what we had to do was create a Tor hidden service and expose that to the open internet, which is allows private routing to be communicating, communicated. And it allows the sender to construct a partial transaction that the receiver also participates in. So both the sender and the receiver put input Bitcoins into this tra transaction and end up with a transaction that looks like that, which is non-deterministic compared to most Bitcoin transactions looking like this, where you have uh, the change is very likely the 99 and the output sent is the test Bitcoin. We can show you in high speed what's actually going on. Armin, do you want to talk about what's going on here? Yeah, thanks, Dan. Uh, it all really starts with the receiver. The receiver is going to generate a Bitcoin address and also spin up a Tor hidden server and that's going to be listening for incoming requests. And then the sender um, takes that hidden uh, service URL and uh, sends it a PSBT with one of its own inputs. Request. The receiver then, sorry, the request. The receiver then adds one of its own inputs and sends it back. Uh, and then from there, the sender can broadcast it, and you get a transaction uh, like we showed you on Blockstream, where the inputs and the outputs are disassociated. 
And this, because we have this hidden service, it can be extended to be uh, reused. So you have a, an endpoint that instead of an address that's only used once, you can use it multiple times. And we can do other things like uh, have an alternative to solve some of the change issues that link previous coin joins um, together. So it's a really good tool to have in the arsenal and we're definitely the first to make it happen on iOS. Um, our, this is our stack. We're built off of Wasabi Wallet and the BIP78 was inspired by BTC Pay. But I think that's it from us. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. And if we have time for questions, we'll take those. Uh, I don't think we have time for questions, unfortunately. But oh, thank cool. you very much for participating and congratulations. Great job, thank guys. You. Great job, guys. Yeah, I, I think at the end that we might have some time for some questions, but we want to make sure that all the teams get out there. So please, like, if you have any questions uh, in the audience, please uh, add it to the, um, uh, you know, to the feed there, and we will and we will get it at the end for sure. Um, the next team that we would like to announce um, for our usability track is the Bitcoin design community, and they are gonna be excited to tell you about what they did. So welcome Bitcoin design community. Hey everybody, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, pull up something uh, on my screen uh, right here to share. Um, can everybody uh, see okay? Yeah, so uh, yeah, I'm Steven, I'm with the uh, Bitcoin design community. Uh, also got Christoph Ono on the call. Um, uh, my teammate, um, one of the original members of the Bitcoin design community. Um, and basically, uh, you know, what we do is we provide open source uh, design resources for non-custodial Bitcoin projects. And uh, kind of one problem we had been discussing recently is the idea of wallet backups and how to make this kind of thing more accessible and more intuitive to people. Um, you know, it's a very kind of casual thing. You sign up for a wallet for the first time and it's telling you to grab a piece of paper and write down 24 seed words. And um, it's, it's, it's actually a really important thing that needs to be taken, you know, a little bit more seriously than that. So we tried to create a tool this weekend that would help uh, a new Bitcoin user to be able to really easily generate a wallet backup in case their wallet's destroyed or, you know, in case, unfortunately, if, if they died and their next of kin needed to access their funds. So this is our landing page right here. And the user, you know, they get started. They uh, are asked if they're using a multi-sig wallet or not. Um, and we have this document over here. This is essentially what we're generating, a paper wallet backup. And as you can see, if you choose yes, it then adds on some other additional information there um, about your multi-sig backup. Um, we also foresee it being the kind of thing where in the future we could expand it to have templates for different types of popular wallet models, or the user can go down their own path and you know fill in their own wallet settings. I'm gonna up this from 12 to 24 seed words here. Hey, Steven. Yeah. Hey, Steven, real quick. Uh, Figma is not updating for me, at least. I think it does that sometimes. I still see the landing screen here. Okay. Can everyone else on the video see the screen okay? No, we all just see the landing screen. And... Oh, okay. Well, that's that's unfortunate. Um, I'm not I'm sure. i refresh it real quick, maybe. Thanks for jumping Figma in, Christoph. Figma does that occasionally. Can everybody uh, see okay now? So it might be that my uh, screen share is uh, frozen or something. Um, so that's that's unfortunate. Um, like if I switch to a different tab, can anybody see that? I see your mouse, uh, your cursor move around. But the screen is still the same. Yep. Well, I tell you what, that's, uh, that's unfortunate. But I guess uh, for some reason, um, uh, my screen share is frozen and, you know, hey, I honestly had kind of gone on with my day and I'm actually not even in my main office right now. But um, I tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and stop my screen share because I know we have limited time and we have some other teams to get to. And uh, I'll just go ahead and say that, uh, you know, we basically built this visual interface um, that will... Uh, allow people to generate a paper wallet um, that, you know, we're trying to make them think about the types of information um, that they're they're backing up and, and how they would access their wallet in the future. And we just we hope that, um, you know, we can do things like this to, you know, make Bitcoin a more intuitive and accessible technology for people. And it's an open source project, uh, open design. If anybody is interested in uh, uh, joining us and helping with this project as we uh, further it along, 
Um, you can look up our GitHub repository right now. So it's a SBD design slash Bitcoin dash backup dash helper. And uh, so if you just look that up on GitHub, you can uh, find uh, our repository um, and you can find our Figma files and uh, you can uh, jump in and uh, join in on the project. Um, Christoph, anything else you'd like to add? Nope, you summer you summed it up pretty well. Uh, it's uh, it's a very it's there's no there's no huge technical protocol challenge or so happening. It's a very simple usability tool. But in user testing, I've also noticed that a lot of people just don't take this serious because they it's a really uncommon uh, interaction. It's something that you just don't know uh, how to do properly from other digital experiences. So helping people do this one thing right that will help them secure their funds for for the long term can actually go a pretty long way. So we're just hoping to tackle that well. Well, thank you very much. I'm yeah. very impressed and I'm surprised no one else has done this before, so. And I pasted the link in the chat uh, to our micro site if anybody wants to see it. So thank you so much for having us here. You're very welcome. And thank you for uh, bringing your project um, to our hackathon. I know that we didn't get to see it, but folks, uh, these, fo these guys are really doing a great job of making uh, you know, tracking uh, your wallet and making it a little bit easier for everyday folks uh, to feel comfortable entering uh, the, the Bitcoin uh, kind of um, space. So thank you for that. Uh, love it. Thank you. Uh, th thank you, Bitcoin design community. Uh, our next winner that we would like to um, bring up to talk to speak with everyone is um, has won the DAP and DeFi award this year at the MIT Bitcoin Hackathon, and they are Crowdly. So please welcome Crowdly um, to give us a, a synopsis of their project. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Abhishek from Team Crowdly. My, my teammate, Avin, is also here. So I pull up something, and you should be able to see my screen now. Um, Visible? Yes, you're visible. Crowdly is basically a crypto economic social media platform where users can uh, look at uh, posts that people post as news and they can vote for it and they can also take it as news to them. So, what I mean by that is we have a social media app where people can rely on it for news as well as make money. So the problem which we aim to solve is that there's a lot of misinformation in today's age. If you look at Twitter, you know, people can post a lot of things which can, may or may not be true. And the best thing that uh, Twitter as an organization can do is to flag it, say that it's not accurate. But uh, the, the information still keeps going around. So there's no way to control it. And people ultimately end up losing faith in all of social media itself. And so in order to combat this problem, uh, we have come up with a proper solution, which is to provide a trusted source of information. So we've basically divided our app into two sections. One is the news market and the other is called the verified news section. So whatever the user sees in the verified news section is proper news, which is verified. And whatever the user sees on the news market is, is information where you know, you can vote for it. You can vote if the information is true and you can vote for it to be false. And for voting, you'll have to pay, pay an amount. And if what you're voting turns out to be true in the end, uh, when I say true, uh, I mean an independent source voting for it to be the same thing you vote for. So when it turns out to be true, you get your returns. It's basically like a stock market where you invest early on and then once uh, what you bet on turns out to be right, you, you get your returns. So well, it's basically a stock market for news. That's what we're trying to do. So our technology stack is React.js, Node.js, Solidity, and the packages we use with Matic for reducing gas prices, Portis for authentication, and Truffle for development purposes. So, so this is our work, the working of our application. So just like any social media platform, a user creates a post. And once the person creates a post, it's visible in the news market. When, the, when it's visible, it's not, when it's visible in the news market at first, it's not visible in the uh, verified news section because it's not verified yet. So when it's visible in the news market, people start betting on it. Some people bet on it to be true. Some people bet on it to be false. And in the end, to give the verdict, 
and uh, uh, an independent organization such as a news organization would vote for it to be true or false. If they vote to be true, vote it to be true, then the people who voted to be true will get their returns, and the people who voted uh, voted wrongly will lose their money. And once that happens, once the uh, independent organization finishes its voting, the the news goes to the uh, verified news section. So people can trust on that news to be true. So whatever you see on the verified news section is verified by people as well as news organizations. So at the first step, this is where uh, we create the post. You could post with any name you want and your, your message. And in order to post it, you have a minimal gas fee and we've tried to reduce it as much as possible using Maverick. And once that is done, uh, once you post something, it's visible on the news market, such as, you, know, you can see here. Uh, and once it's visible, users can predict whether it's yes or no. So in order to predict, you'll have to pay an amount and the amount is visible here. Yes, 0.01 ether and no 0.01 ether. And uh, uh, I, I don't mean to interrupt Abhishek, but uh, yeah. we're kind of running out of time here, but sorry. Yeah, cool, fine. cool. So, yeah. so, uh, so the independent organization does the same voting and once it's done, the news is visible in the verified section and uh, the people who got uh, made the right votes, they get their uh, returns. So that's pretty much it. Some of the problems we ran into were, you know, integrating Matic and Fortis. And apart from that, we didn't have any problems. So that's our presentation. Arvind, would you like to add anything? Cool. So that's the end of our presentation. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry, Arvind, I couldn't hear you. Did can you repeat what you said? Um yeah, I guess that I guess that's it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For uh for that presentation crowdly. Uh, great project. Thank you so much. Um so this last project, um, I want to kind of present in a little bit different way because this at the beginning of the hackathon all the hackers were given uh, the opportunity to talk to the sponsors this year the sponsors were foundry skynet and algorand they all had challenges uh, that were a part of the hackathon and one of the things that the sponsors decided to do which i think was just in the spirit of like just you know collaboration everything that that Bitcoin and blockchain are all about is that they said if hackers could actually use more than one of these um, challenges together, that they would be happy to um, actually reward these uh, the, a project that was able to um, you know use more than one of the technologies in it um, with multiple prizes. And this next group actually really really did a great job with that. Um, I'd like to welcome to the stage. Algorand Autonomous. Algorand Autonomous has won the prizes from Skynet, Algorand, as well as from the MIT Bitcoin Club. They have won the, um, the infrastructure prize uh, for using these multiple infrastructures together in their project. So welcome Algorand Autonomous. Thank you so Everybody, much. Everybody, thank you. Yeah, thank you yeah, thank you so much for having us and thank you so much for organizing the hackathon and great job to all the other teams out here. Really great projects. I'm really excited to see how they do moving forward. And uh, for our presentation, I guess I'll just share my screen. Um, can y'all see that okay? Can y'all see my screen okay? Uh, yep, we can now. Okay, cool. Um, thank you. I'll just go to the hackathon and our submission. So the, our project was essentially making a de decentralized autonomous organization. And essentially the challenge we decided to focus on was making a decentralized autonomous organization for the financial funds industry. So, and the reason we decided to do this was because we realized that a lot of financial funds were operating in a really top-down manner where a lot of, where a small number of individuals had the ability and the power to control the funds and the investments of a large plethora of individuals. 
So Algorand Autonomous is a decentralized autonomous organization and manages to retain the security of the fund while giving members the independence of an investment broker. And if you've been following the news recently, probably know that investment brokers, even though they give members independence, they can be really risky. So to really tackle the Algorand challenge, uh, we use the Algorand system and Algorand consensus. Brian, can you talk about that? Since uh, you were a big part of kind of putting all that together. Yeah, so the first thing we did was look at the documentation for PyTO, which is a Python interpreter for the Algorand TO language. And then once we got familiar with the language, we started developing a UI to make the Algorand software accessible to regular users. Yeah, and essentially what we ended up doing was making a smart contract where individuals could invest in a fund and have a stake in the voting system through by sending algo to the main fund. And as you can see right here, someone can execute the smart contract. Next up, uh, we developed a voting algorithm that was decentralized in nature and allowed everyone to have a say in how the DAO will be updated. So uh, DAOs in their very nature need to be updated periodically. And we wanted to ensure that they could be updated while having uh, through voting stakes. And this is an example of the voting algorithm. And finally, um, we made a neural net network to help investors predict the price of algo. And because algo, the cryptocurrency for Algorand was the central point of all our transactions on any investments were the central with, center with Algorand. And we don't neural really manage to track the value of the Algorand cryptocurrency so that investors and validators can choose when they want to participate. And obviously, and so finally, uh, the main problem after this was figuring out where to store all this information, all this important financial information. And to do that, we took advantage of Skynet's, Skynet's SkyDB database. So essentially through this application, someone can enter in a secret key and easily upload all their financial information in this transaction spot. So if, if I'm gonna be sending, for example, uh, I'll go to Brian, then um, I can just type that all out here and say and say it's five algo and essentially record all this transaction data and this will be saved so i can access at any time and have a proof of work as long as i remember my secret key uh brian you want to talk uh, more about our about the project and kind of like the theoretical basis about it in the time we have left oh uh, yeah i would just say thanks again for the opportunity to work on the problems that the sponsors put out um if you want to learn more just check out our github or the website and uh, thanks again to everybody. Mm -hmm. We also have a white paper available. So if you want to kind of see the theoretical stuff, uh, theoretical distribution documents, uh, stake, staking with algorithms, and we also have a couple of demos of how, when we do when we do plan to officially launch this, about how users will interact with the smart contract system, which hopefully will be posted directly on the website. And Manish, uh, thank you so much for, uh, for all of your help in organizing everything. And thank yeah, you guys. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Same thoughts here. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for our presentation. Thank you so much. Great, everyone. I'm so excited for all of you guys. You had just, uh, just every hacker that showed up, all the questions, all the passion that went into the last couple of days. It was just really incredible. And I want to um, please take a moment to thank our sponsors, uh, Foundry and Stacks. Um, you know, they were wonderful. They were in, I think some of you folks probably met them in the metaverse in um, Gather Town. And um, I hope people took advantage of Gather Town because that was just great. And Gather Town and Gather again being a, a wonderful sponsor. But in this hackathon, you know, also we had um, Algorand. Uh, their team was just incredible. Um, they had uh, they gave a lot of time to answer questions. And same thing with Skynet. Skynet, we're always thankful. They've been with they've been supporting our um, expo for the last I think five or six years, and uh, they've been so consistent in their support of us and. Um, they've been great. So if, uh, you know, all of our sponsors, thank you. Thank you. We are humbled by your kindness. And um, again, all the hackers, you know, we had 252 applicants come in. And in terms of the people that followed through and finished these groups that you're seeing in front of you, these people are incredible. Um, if, uh, you know, if you're out there and looking for talent, uh, MIT's Got Talent. So thank you so much for um, everyone for tuning in and, and, and listening to us here. And I just want to turn over my partner in, in crime, Trey, who I really couldn't have done any of this stuff without. Thank you so much, Trey, for your help 
through, you know, um, through Thank this whole you. process. Thank um, I didn't introduce myself earlier, but I'm Trey. I was helping out with the hackathon, and I was also organizing the PO app that we have running. Uh, there's three PO apps, if you aren't aware, um, and you get one for attending and everything. Also, to remind everybody um, that if you haven't yet, you can get the special sponsored uh, scavenger hunt challenge um, if you come join us on our gather town, um, which you can find the link for somewhere else on the site. So um, exciting stuff. Can't get it anywhere else. Um, Thank everybody for watching, and thank all. Thanks you. Thank you to all of our participants for participating in, uh, you know, extenuating circumstances all virtually. Um, so that's it, I guess. <laughs> I think maybe Dan might have a couple of things to say. Um, Dan, are you? Yeah. Well, I want to congratulate all the hackers. Thank you so much for participating in this weekend. I think um, Manish and Trey have kind of like both put it pretty well. These are extraneous circumstances, and uh, we appreciate everyone who has followed through and uh, did some awesome hacks. And thank you so much, Manisha and Trey. Really, we wouldn't have had this uh, hackathon without both of them. They did an amazing job. Thank you. <laughs>